the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, I'm glad you're back. I hope you enjoyed part C. This is part D of the continuing focus on transforming to the image of the sun. And I, like I said before, I do like to make sure we remind ourselves that what does an image look like, right? Not the, this is the way we go to church, you know, act one way and act another. We talk about a lifestyle, but not a legalistic lifestyle. We talk about characteristics, a, 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 a character of nature. And, I, and I'm put here quickly is the, the fruits of the Spirit. Just remind you, I think I'm probably reminding you, I'm making me the permanent part of, this, <laughs> of the videos. Anyway, in the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22, 23, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You know, so we, when we, 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 focus in the study this time, and I, I think it really be something to focus on for the year, is to bear those fruits of the Spirit, to always sit there and try to bear the fruits of the Spirit, and try to understand, this is the image where, where people want you to, 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 to walk, you know, when they come into your presence, they want to, they want to, they basically want to look for a good person, you know? And on this segment of the study, this is part D of the study, Bible study, we start looking at uh, fasting, and brother was bringing up, what is the purpose of fasting? And we talked about it, and, and I think you'll find it very interesting in the study. But I, I, I think it's also just to, to focus on at least giving you the opportunity and the panel when they get to see this video, is what does the scripture say about fasting? Uh, because it was dealing with the Jesus coming off the Mount of Transfiguration, and the, the son was like a lunatic, and the other disciples couldn't cast him out. And Jesus cast him out, and they asked why he couldn't. They couldn't cast him out. They said because he was unbelief. And this type of thing doesn't come out through something fast, prayer and fasting. So the brother brought it up because he said he wants to get that. That's one of the pieces in his life. In Christian walk is what's the purpose of fasting to to allow him to 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 pull down strongholds. So that he can do the works of God and allow God work work through him, really. That's the big piece. But I thought it was important to show you what the scripture says about fasting. So I, because this is a Bible study, even for our studies, it's a, it's a Bible study. So what I did, I decided to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and go through those scriptures that deal with fasting. So this is this is something for you as well as the 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 uh, brothers when they do it, when we they hear this video. We may cover it our Bible study later, but we know a lot of people fasting during the, the month of January as get rid of all that great food we had for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But what does fasting, what does scripture say about fasting? Isaiah 58, starting to verse one. I'll read these real quick for you. Because both cases, like I said, we do the thing and do uh, in-depth study and discussion. But just for you to have this, or when we ever do fasting, you have these scriptures. Isaiah 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show thy people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sin. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have ye fact, said they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labor. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and the smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard of God. Verse five, is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for man to afflict his soul? 
is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and accept the day of the Lord? Is not this the fast that I've chosen? to loose the band of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that I cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou covers him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? Then shall thy delight, thy light break forth as a morning, and thy health shall bring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Verse 9, then shall they call, and the Lord shall answer. Then shall cry, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity, if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as a new day. And the Lord shall guide thee continuously and satisfy thy soul in drought and make that thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, who water fails not. Amen. I mean, we talked about the fast, and you see about that, it, even the fast, it's talking about pulling down stronghold, but also those are the bad fruits. It's talking about feeding the hungry. You know, it's, it's talking about um, for health and healing. It's talking about hearing from God. It's, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's bearing that fruit. It's bearing that being submissive to God. So I, I wanted to put those scriptures in there just in case you have any question about what does the Bible say about fasting since this is the month of January. I think, you, I think you'll like those. Uh, we also focus the fact is that we need to fast in our mind. Not only, you know, sometimes it's like, what are we feeding? But sometimes we need to break away from from the news, break away from people that, that, that punks your brain, punks your mind, and just focus and, and meditate on things that are good, and pure and honest, amen? And, and then even Jesus, we said, went away sometimes and just uh, fast. So we went up to that, and that's what we talked about, is just for this part D. We did start talking about the, uh, the keys of David, and we'll get with that, but the keys of David will talk about authority. Uh, God's kingdom on earth. And, and as we come into the body of Christ, those keys are given to the saints to be part of the kingdom. So I hope you enjoyed this Bible study. I enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoy those scriptures. Like I said, you want to know about fasting? There it is. And, and like I said, all remember, our image is bearing fruit of the Spirit. That's what we're looking for. That's what we should be trying to strive for. That's it. We're going to be great. We keep working on it. Amen. All right. Hope you enjoy this part D. And I'll see you in part E. God bless. Bye bye. You, know, you remember the one situation where he was saying, Why were you not able to cast these out? Yeah. And he said, Because this, because your unbelief. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I was going to say, This kind of goes out only through prayer and fasting, right? Nice. Yes, sir. Right. Nice. So much, I was wondering. And, and I'm, I'm still working on this, you know. Um, of course, is the prayer, I mean, the fasting, we had to have a renewed mind to receive the things of God. Yes, sir. Eating is like one of those basic essential things that we're accustomed to doing to sustain ourselves in this earth suit or in this environment. Yes, sir. When we are in the process of renewing our minds, are we just fasting help us to kind of turn away from or to destroy that stronghold because it's such a basic uh function of our cardinal behavior right. you know what i'm saying right and if we're, if we're trying to renew our minds does fasting assist us in turning away from that cardinal those cardinal strongholds or those cardinal 
what do we call them? micros? I think where you push the one button on the computer and do a whole bunch of stuff that's programmed already. Yes, sir. Ma macros. Yeah. Macros. Macro. Yeah. Is Mac that M A? Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, there's certain things that, that that happen to us subconsciously. I'll see something and then it's causing me to go into a mode of thinking that I'm not even controlling it anymore, but it's automatic. It, it, it's just my body is starting to do things on its own. And, and it seems as though it all seems to be attached to some cardinal to include uh, uh, eating, uh -huh. cardinal behavior. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like, and like you said earlier, the more I get caught up in the cardinality, yeah. the more cardinality seems to manifest in my flesh. Like with the, with the politics and stuff, the election stuff, I was getting caught up in that too. You know what I mean, yeah. I've been, yeah. for yeah. months now, I've been dealing with things on the job, things in the politics. Yeah. And the more I get caught up in that, it appears though the sicker I get. <laughs> you Elder, know what I'm saying? Elder, I think you raise a very interesting point in that I'll say this, and, 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 and I think back to the same scripture that you just referenced as to this time coming not out but by prayer and fasting and i think the subject was faith faith because he dealt with the unbelief i think that in in the world that we live in today that the fasting of the mentality the fasting of the mind you know the separation of it from what we've been feeding it not just the feeding of the body fasting yeah, yeah. but the feeding of the mind is so imperative to this faith that only comes out yeah. by prayer and fasting i think yeah. a lot of it has to do with the fasting ourselves from the the, the strengths the benefits the talent the giftings that we have naturally and from what the media or, or the world system is pushing to we only concentrating and meditating on the things of God and what he has done and his promises. And I think that builds our faith. Yeah. And, then, and, and so I think the fasting of the mind, right. and it's just me now, no. I'm thinking to me now that the fasting of the mind uh -huh. is, is becoming more important than the fasting of food for the body. Yeah, because you know, Jimmy, could, could, could I, if y'all mind, can I interject in this way is, I'm, I'm, I'm not fasting from the things of God. I'm just fasting from the things that that benefit my flesh, right? In other words, I'm, 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 I'm increasing one diet and reducing the other one. I'm strengthening one aspect of who I am, my spirit, through the things of God. In other words, I'm increasing uh, the, 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 the relationship, the fellowship, the word, the, 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 the allowing and leading of the Holy Spirit, allowing it. And I'm also fasting away. What's getting when you fasting? You're also separating from, from the media, from things that distract you. Jesus did it often, right? Remember Jesus sometimes went off to, 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 uh, to the mountain or somewhere away from everybody. Right. You too. But when he did that, he didn't go to stop felt relationship. He he focused only on the relationship with God. Well, well, I, I wonder. You see, when we look at that text, I, I think, I don't know about you guys, but I think about at least two solid weeks uh -huh. in that verse. Because I want to really know. You know, the text says that the thing that, that the, the essential thing that needed to happen was that unbelief was hinged upon fasting coupled with prayer. Which, That's correct. Which is right, that fellowship to me, right to that fellowship with God, right? Prayer is communicating. You know what I'm saying mm -hmm. though, what that what Jesus is actually talking about is far deeper than what we bought just kind of kicking around in this conversation. Uh-huh, uh-huh that we actually go back and really kind of like what I did with this text in, 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 in Revelation chapter 3. I say, I, I really want to know what, what, what the CIT or what the conclusion was drawn from the text here. Uh -huh. <clears throat> when we looked at Matthew 17, uh, when Jesus came back from down off that mountain and had that encounter with his apostles. Right. I don't think that person said, this guy going out with my prayer and fasting. I wanted to know Okay, well, what is he? What is he really telling us? Because <laughs> see, I, 
I got the same problem the apostle down in the valley had. Come on. <laughs> I got that same problem. Amen. I'm going to follow him. <laughs> I have this expectation that I, that I ought to have certain signs following. Uh -huh. I look back and see what's following me. I got my shadow. <laughs> and, some, and, and some failures. Mm -hmm. And so it, it really it really behooves us that if we really want to move from the place in our lives, if we want to see real changes in our lives. Yes. If we want to go beyond just having these discussions uh -huh. and let let the discussion begin be, begin to be something that God can use to really do a real change in our lives, right. then we will have to go deep into what, what Christ is really talking about. Yes, sir. One of the things that came out in my study of, of, of I, I'll say this. Uh, I wonder when y'all looked at Philippians, not Philippians, but we looked at Revelation chapter 3. Uh -huh. Did you come up with any other verses <laughs> for reference? We, I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. We covered because we we did the uh, Church of Sardis last time, uh, and I could have somewhere we went into some other. I'm pretty sure we covered a scripture. Uh, okay, so, well, tell me, tell me. I, I want to hear who got references for the key of David. I got it. What you I, got? Huh? Well, what, what, what is it? What are they? Isaiah 22, 22. Uh, -uh. Mm -hmm. uh That was the first reference of the key of David, and it was talking about. Uh, I even have it here. Let me show you real quick. If you don't mind, wait. I was hoping Brother Addison would show up. Let's see here. But that verse is not talking about David, is it? No, but it's at what I And the key of the house of David will I lay up on his shoulder. You talking about yeah. that? You talking about that authority? Let me see. What? Somebody here? Who's that? There's Addison now. He came right on time. Hey, Brother Addison. I see. Well, he he's somewhere. Let me see. I brought it up. Let me see if I can bring it up, Jimmy. You see, here's the uh, bishop. Look at that. That's the beginning of it. Uh, I, I put down first where the key indicates control or authority. Uh, therefore, having the key of David would give one control of David's, David's dominion, i.e. Jerusalem, the city of David, and the kingdom of Israel. And just, just to jump ahead, I did Jim, I did take the um, what the concordance word for right, the right. Uh, and it's interesting this this person that he referenced in that verse is uh, uh, I can't pronounce his name as well, but it, it's called God is right, God of rising, and that kind of reminded me of the resurrection, Jimmy, when I when I was looking at the guy's name uh, that was referring to, but here's twenty two, brother Addison. Yeah, he back there drinking coffee. <laughs> well, anyway, if, if uh, Elder Johnson, yes, could you read that for us? But okay. <clears throat> he indicates control or authority. Therefore, having the key of David will give one control of David's domain, 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 i.e., Jerusalem, the city of David, and the kingdom of Israel. Isaiah twenty-two twenty-two. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, shoulder. So he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. Interesting. Yeah. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue, all vessels of small quantity, from the vessels of cups even to all the vessels of flagon. In that day, said the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the shoe place be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off, for the Lord has spoken it. Mm. I think it's enough. Yeah. Before you move on. That's it. Yeah, go ahead. That was it. I think it's important for you to, you, that you really have to start, if you go take that verse, you really have to start at verse 20. Because verse 20 really tells you who God is talking to. Yeah, I know, but it did tell that's the name. That's why right here was, uh, I thought I put that put in there, but I guess I left it out. Just